Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm Cai Huidu. Today, I will introduce our work. Our scatter, high throughput in band OFDM backscatter with over the air co division. This work is done through the collaboration among Beijing Institute of Technology, Capital Normal University, and Tsinghua University. In the past few years, the proliferation of wireless applications emphasized the importance of ultra low power communication technique, such as the ambient backscatter communication. This work contains three parts an ambient exciter, which often referred to as Alice, a passive tag, and a backscatter receiver, which is referred to as Bob. In this system, tag takes the ambient signal from the existing exciter Alice as the carrier to communicate with the backscatter receiver Bob. By changing the reflection coefficient, it modifies such signal when reflecting it and thereby embed its data over the excitation signal. As the ambient backscatter system does not consume power to generate any dedicated carrier, it is low power and suitable for many wireless applications, such as smart home and smart city. Among the different type of backscatter systems, the OFDM backscatter has received considerable attention due to the wide deployment of OFDM exciters. We envision that a ready-to-use OFDM backscatter system should follow in three design requirements. First, it should provide a data rate of at least hundreds of thousands bit per second to support various high data rates applications, such as telecommuting and live streaming. Second, it should also transmit in the original channel rather than occupying any additional frequency resources. Third, it should support one radio demodulation. However, non-existing works except our scatter satisfies these design requirements simultaneously. The reason preventing this lies in that the existing works are forced to trade off between the less spectrum occupation and the higher throughput. Some of these works transmit the backscatter signal in the same channel as the original one to save the spectrum resources. However, this would cause their transmission suffering significant interference from the original signal. Consequently, these systems would only provide limited throughput. On the other hand, although many works would shift their backscatter signal to another channel to avoid the interference and improves the throughput, they consume lots of spectrum resources since the OFDM excitation is typically wideband. For distinction, we refer to the formal type as the in-band backscatter system and the latter type as the sideband backscatter system. Considering the drawbacks of these systems, we present our scatter, which is an in-band backscatter system that has a communication ability comparable to the sideband backscatter systems. Typically, an OFDM backscatter system would modulate the excitation data segment of the whole OFDM symbol to embed each bit of the tag data. It will reverse the phase of this symbol to transmit tag data 1 and keep such phase unchanged to transmit the tag data 0. Similar to these works, a scatter also utilizes ambient OFDM signal as its carrier and embeds every one bit of his data over an excitation data segment in the backscatter signal. The key is that besides embedding tag data over the phase of such data segment, we vary its content to distinct it from the data segment in the original signal overlapping with it. For distinction, we refer to them as the backscatter cohort and the original cohort. We also refer to the relation between these cohorts as quasi orthogonal. This cohort poses two features. One, as all scatter transmit data at a single symbol rate, the length of the backscatter cohort equals that of an OFDM symbol. However, we emphasize that it is not an OFDM symbol. Instead, it is constructed by combining the halves of two successive OFDM symbols. Two, the original cohort overlaps with the backscatter cohort in both type, time and frequency domain. This would cause great interference for the tag data decoding. Luckily, 
Thanks to the quasi-orthogonal relation between these coverts, the receiver can perform interference cancellation before decoding the text data, and thereby provide a better transmission performance than other in-band works. However, to design our scatter, we must overcome several challenges. Before introducing our design, we first explain the challenges we encounter. The first challenge is how to design the quasi orthogonal cohorts utilize the fallback scattering. Intuitively, we can modify each bit of the original cohort to create the backscatter cohort. However, this will require time to conduct speed level modulation. Since the excitation data in a typical OFDM system is only independent in the frequency domain and overlaps in the time domain, a passive tag can only conduct symbol level modulation instead of the required bit level modulation to vary the original cohort. That said, the backscatter modulation would change the whole OFDM symbol instead of only one subcarrier of this symbol. Thereby, we cannot create the quasi orthogonal backscatter cohorts by modifying each bit of the original cohort. The second challenge is how to passively generate the backscatter cohort. We take two overlapping original and backscatter symbols as an example. Given that the tag cannot vary each bit of the OFDM symbol independently, we ask it to swap the subcarriers of the first half and the second half of the backscatter symbol. This way, the first halves of the original and backscatter symbol will be quasi orthogonal. However, the first half of the original symbol is still identical to the second half of the backscatter symbol. Therefore, the first and the second half of the backscatter symbol should not be in the same backscatter cohort, meaning that Tech should embed his data at the half symbol level. However, as the subcarriers of OFDM symbol overlaps in the time domain, typical OFDM backscatter system can only transmit tag data as the symbol, single symbol read at most. The third challenge is how to cope with the interference from the original signal. In the sideband system, the backscatter signal is frequency shifted far away from the original signal. They are independently transmitted in different channels and hence will not impact each other. However, in the in-band system, the backscatter signal utilizes the original channel and overlaps with the original signal in both time and frequency domain. Therefore, the original signal will create strong interference to the decoding of the backscatter signal. Other in-band works will utilize the redundant coding scheme and embed one bit tag data into multiple OFDM symbols or even the whole OFDM packet. This significantly degrades the throughput to merely tens of thousands bit per second. Considering this, we should provide the backscatter communication with high throughput. We must cope with such interference without employing any redundant coding scheme. Solving these challenges, we design or scatter. Our work makes the following technical contributions. First, we design the over-the-air code division scheme that embed tag data over the quasi orthogonal backscatter cohorts. Second, we design the double sideband symbol construction scheme that generates such backscatter cohort while keeping the power consumption similar to existing works. Finally, to cope with the interference from the original signal, we designed the quasi orthogonal interference cancellation and decoding scheme. It utilizes the quasi orthogonal cohorts to conduct cross and accurate interference cancellation before decoding the tag data accurately. We next show the design detail of our design. To generate the backscatter cohort, tag will first produce a spire wave at the frequency of half of the bandwidth, so that the backscatter signal is shifted by plus and minus one half of the bandwidth. This way, as the backscatter signals transmit over the air, their in-band parts will naturally splice and form a new backscatter symbol whose subcarriers are swept. Since the halves of such symbol are from two different OFDM signals, 
they can be modulated independently, meaning that Tai can embed his data at a half symbol level. Therefore, Tai would embed one bit data over the second half of the first symbol and the first half of the second symbol. It has generated the backscatter code, which I also know to the original one. To realize this modulation process, we only need to employ a passive single port for through switch to generate four desired reflection coefficients. For the modulation, the receiver bulb will first decode the excitation data and get the quasi orthogonal cohorts. Then, it performs a two-step interference cancellation scheme before decoding the text data. I will first explain how the excitation data is decoded. Intuitively, the excitation data can be directly decoded through the capture effect. However, as stated in reference 24, the bit error rate of such decoding result would increase when the original signal is less than 10 decibels stronger than the backscatter one. Considering this, Bob needs to estimate the signal stress rate between the received original and backscatter signal. This can be accomplished through the null subcarriers. They make the region A in the received OFDN symbol only contains the original signal and the region B only contains the backscatter signal. Therefore, Bob can roughly get the signal stress rate by computing the received signal strength of these regions. If it is higher than 10 decibel, Bob would decode the excitation data based on the capture effect. On the other hand, he would decode it through the full RAM equations. To ensure the decoding result is correct, Bob would also employ the cyclic redundancy check to examine it. With the excitation data, he has inferred the quasi orthogonal cohorts original with these cohorts. Bob performs interference cancellation and decodes the text data. In the cross cancellation step, he utilizes the quasi orthogonal cohorts to estimate the original signal stress. In this case, he would assume the channel state is invariant among the different subcarriers in one OFDM symbol. However, the frequency selective fading would make the strength of different subcarriers variant from each other. Considering this, Bob would then utilize the adaptive filter to conduct the accurate signalization and further eliminate the original signal. After interference cancellation, he finally decodes the tag data from the inner product between the backscatter cohort and the interference cancellation result. Here, we imply the cross-cancellation process to decrease co the convergence time of our adaptive filter. We also imply the accurate cancellation process to eliminate the original signal left by the frequency selective fading. The above shows the transmission scheme of all scatter. To realize it, another problem must be solved which is how to explain, improve the signalization distance. To this end, we know that a typical OFDM system has a cyclic prefix that is the periodic extension of the OFDM symbol. Therefore, if the OFDM symbol is copied and delayed by the duration of the data, the cyclic prefix of this copy would be identical to the last part of such symbol. This way, the multi result will remain constant for the duration of the cyclic prefix. We hence propose a sliding window matching scheme, which utilizes a sliding window to match every cyclic prefix of the OFDM signal with the OFDM signal delayed by the duration of the data part. Specifically, we will first utilize an envelope detector to extract the envelope of the OFDM signal and then utilize a comparator with a predetermined threshold to binarize this envelope. We then delay and compute the binarized multiplication result of these envelopes. Such a result will remain one for the duration of the cyclic prefix once the cyclic prefix is detected and tag is synthesized with the excitation signal. Our scheme enables accurate synthesization within a longer distance while consuming similar power as traditional approaches. After showing our transmission scheme, we show the implementation detail of our tag and the experiment result. Our 
tag is implemented following an open source backscatter platform that is proposed by Hitchhack. We here replace the single port single source switch with that single port four source switch to get the desired antenna coefficient for generating the quasi orthogonal coverts. In ASIC simulation, our power consumption is 63.3 microwatt, which fits the low power design requirement. We test all scatter in different deployment and different excitation settings. We respectively text all scatter under OS game Wi-Fi and LTE excitation. First, we evaluate the performance by comparing all scatter with the state-of-the-art sideband and in-band OS game systems. We set the Alice to tag distance seen as rapid rider and the study in reference 23. We also choose the same type of the exciter. As shown, the maximum throughput of our scatter is higher than all these works because the interference cancellation is conducted before decoding. This cancels the original signal and avoids the redundant coding method implied by other inbound works. We also evaluate our scatter and the different signal to stress rate packet read and exciter to tag distance. To test the transmission performance and the different signal strength rate, we first change the relative position among Alice, Tag, and Bob to get different signal strength rate. Then, for each deployment, we ask Alice to generate a sine wave with, whose frequency spectrum has not overlapped with the backscatter signal. This way, we can compute the signal strength rate between the received original and backscatter signal accurately. As shown, when the signal strength rate is less than 11.7 decibel, the bit error rate of all scatter is below 10 to the minus 4. In the experiment of different packet rate, we increase Alice's packet rate from 100 packets per second to 1000 packets per second. Our experimental result confirms that the changing of the packet rate would hardly impact the signal strength rate or the bit error rate. Finally, in the experiment of different excitation and Alice to tag distance, we choose the LTE excitation with 1.4 MHz bandwidth and 128 subcarriers. We set the Alice to tag bulb distance to three meters and put our tags in between. According to our experimental result, when the tag employs the LT exciter as is within two meters from Alice, the signalization error would hardly impact the tag data decoding. To summarize, we have designed and implemented our scatter, a novel in-band backscatter system that achieves reliable and high throughput communication while saving the spectrum resources. The key innovation lies in the design of the over-the-air co-division technique that constructs the quasi orthogonal cohorts in the backscatter signal from the original excitation signal passively. Meanwhile, we propose a sliding window matching scheme that enables accurate scenarization at longer distance. As thoroughly confirmed by our evaluation, our scatter is generic and works in different scenarios and exciters. That's all, and thank you for your time.